Did it become harder for you to manage the team once it moved to the new stadium? Big players like like Wayne Rooney, they were like, oh my God, we are playing next Saturday, we have to go to Upton Park. When now it's Olympic Stadium, everybody goes, oh, we can play here, you know. It's not just, just moving around, it's you have to change a bit your identity. The, the many clubs are losing now in football, that little bit of, of grass smelling in the club or at the training ground. It's not only West Ham, that's happened to Arsenal, that's happened to Schalke in Germany. That makes football in England or Britain so special that the kids from their early stage have been taught from their parents, not only fathers, also mothers, sisters, grandmothers or whatever, that, that the clubs means basically everything to them. Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья! Вот кто бы мог подумать там, месяц назад, что все мы окажемся в этой ситуации, когда нам всем надо сидеть дома, но это еще и хороший повод разгрести огромное количество контента, который мы наснимали за последние полгода, и можно вот потихонечку его выдавать. Вот одно, одно из интервью, которое мы записали, очень интересное, с моей точки зрения, в рамках проекта «Около английского футбола» на «Око Спорт». Мы записывали, естественно, его вместе с Дашей Саевой, это интервью со Славином Биличем, человеком, которому, наверное, не нужно никакое представление. Он играл за сборную Хорватии, тренировал потом ее, играл за Эвертон, играл за Вест Хэм, тренировал, соответственно, Вест Хэм. И еще как бы мы его все хорошо знаем, то, что он тренировал московский локомотив целый сезон. Так вот, в рамках проекта мы записали с ним интервью, когда мы снимали выпуски про Эвертон и про Вест Хэм, клубы один из которых он играл, другой он тренировал. Причем тренировал в очень особенный момент для Вестхэма, момент, когда клуб переезжал с одного стадиона на другой. Ну и мы с ним об этом поговорили. Так что вот вам целиком интервью для русскоязычных зрителей. Там есть подключаемые субтитры. Вот тыкайте сюда, включайте субтитры и поехали. Надеюсь, вам понравится. Slavin, thank you so much for finding time to talk to us. That's a big honor and pleasure for us. <laughs> <laughs> you still remember a lot of Russian? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. It's a, because I have contact still with uh, with some Russian friends, and it's it's a good country. I like it. You were fondly remembered in Russia still, and you know for the time mm -hmm. at Lokomotiv and yeah. and everything else. But we're talking about West Ham now. Yeah. So you were the manager of the club when it famously moved from the old traditional ground, Upton Park, into uh, the new stadium right now. What did it feel like? What was the atmosphere around the club when the move was finalized? Well, it was a specific situation. It was specific. Uh, it was special season. Because when, when I took over and me and my staff, when we took over, it was like last season at the bowling ground or Upton Park or whatever. So let's do well and all that you know it's a far far well season and you have shirts you have everything and all that and we done really well and then uh, then i remember the last game of course against man united that we beat them free too and it was a really really special occasion then when we when we moved uh, everything became you know it's not just changing the stadium it's 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 a big move and i think that west ham fans and the club and Everything they still feel that change. To be fair, we moved at that time. We also moved the training ground, so it was a, even the bigger move. But uh, but it's gonna take some time for for West Ham because it's not just just moving ground. It's you have to change a bit your identity. It's not the same. It's not the same. Your club straight away it becomes a much much bigger club just by moving those stadium. It's like you're moving from a little uh, sort of, um, I don't know, uh, theme park to a, a Disneyland. Yeah, exactly. And it's a move forward, you know. It's a move forward because of uh, what club wants to achieve. It's a move forward to, to attract maybe, I don't know, uh, top, top players from Europe. It's a move forward uh, if you are thinking about the capacity of the ground. It was not even 40,000 now now it's 60. 60 whatever so it's it's a it's a big step up but but you are losing you are losing like in every situation in life there are pluses and minuses you are losing that thing about 
about that, that, that the many clubs are losing now in football. That little bit of, of grass smelling in the club or at the training ground or at the stadium. You are losing a little bit of home atmosphere at your stadium. You are losing a little bit of hostile atmosphere in a, okay, in, in a football way that was there at Upton Park. No, no away team enjoyed coming to play against West Ham at Upton Park. We're now at Olympic Stadium, it's like it's like it's like joy for everybody. For for the opponents. No, 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 it's true. And and it's gonna take West Ham a long time. And some things that West Ham had, like these old values, like family bond or 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 uh, or that kind of old fashioned in a good way. London Club, Green Street, Hooligans, that movie and all that, that that's that's gone. That is gone and it will never come back. The structure of the fence will change also. 100% that happened to, it's not only West Ham, that happened to Arsenal. That happened to Schalke in Germany. That happened to many, many clubs. It's not the same. I'm not saying is it better or worse, but it's definitely not the same and it's different. And uh, as many West Ham fans, it was a necessary move for the club to become bigger on the stock market, to become bigger in I don't know where, blah, blah, blah. But, but uh, in business, in business, but it costs, like everything in life, it costs something and it costs those emotions that you have when you are all together mm -hmm. in that kind of stadium that Upton Park definitely was. A couple of days ago, we were in the territory of the old stadium near that uh, territory. So we also visited um, church and uh, they said to us that you were there also, you prayed for your team. <laughs> no. I didn't pray for the team, like uh, maybe I did sometimes, but uh, I, I visited that church because it was perfect for me. You know, it's a Catholic church and, and it's right next to the, to the Upton Park Stadium. So it was, uh, because in London it's, it's not a small town, you know, you have to drive, I don't know, how, half an hour or whatever, then to park a car here was... Ideal and it's a very nice church. It's a small church and right next to the stadium. So, yeah, it was uh, pretty much uh, a, lo a lot of times there. I'm judging by the sound that Daria just produced. Uh, she yeah. has a gift for you from that church. Does she? Yeah, just take oh. it. It's the oh, nuns. It's a surprise. We interviewed them and they, <laughs> really? yeah, and they gave us uh, the beads. Yeah, that's good. So we brought it over for you. It's a little gift thank from the you, church. Thank you, thank you. Ah, it's a surprise. surprise. You surprised me a lot. <laughs> So we don't come empty-handed. This is Medjugorje. This is from... Uh, who gave you this? The nuns oh, the at nuns. the church. Yeah. At this church? Yeah, at the, the one next to Upton Park. See, remember they remember her. you. Sister and Patricia and Sister Maculata. Exactly. I remember them because they are go because this Medjugorje, it is a holy place in... Uh, Bosnia. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember her giving this to me from because she's regular there and it's only one and a half hours from Split, from my hometown, from Croatia. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Slavin, when, when you, uh, you or the players went to that church, did it somehow, you know, positively affect the results on the field? I don't know, I don't know. Basically, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, when you go to church, you, always, you also pray for, let's be honest, to do well in games or in your job. But mainly, you don't go to church to, to pray for that. You go to church to pray for, for the health of your family, to, for the health of the planet or uh, the kids and for the people who died, basically. Not, 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 you don't go there. Let's, let's pray to be, to beat Man United in our last <laughs> game. Do do something, yeah. Do do sometimes I do. Yes, I do, but it's not the main reason. Did, did that stadium feel like a church a little bit? In terms no, of how passionate thing, and religious you, people really were. Good, good uh, to say that because I, I know a lot about West Ham because I played for West Ham at that stadium and I managed the West Ham. I managed West Ham at that stadium and I, managed, and I was the one that managed West Ham at the new stadium. New stadium is brilliant. I mean, make no mistake about it. But, but uh, it's like West Brom now. I enjoy this because this is like, you can smell the grass. You can smell the grass. This is about football. It's not marble. This is a training ground and I like it. 
I don't like the training grounds to be like like uh, you're gonna find nowadays like five stars hotel. Then it's it's nice for a day or two or whatever, but you you are losing that that bit of uh, war element in that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in a positive way. You know, but bit 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 of a bonding, bit of a fighting, bit of a spirit. You are losing that at the, at the, when everything is stopped. It's like when a family, you know, when it happens to everybody that makes a step, especially financially, you know what I mean? If a family lives, let's say a family of six lives in a, in a small apartment, uh, uh, is it ideal? No, it isn't, of course, but, but they are all good, you know what I mean? They're all friendly, they sleep with each other and all that, blah, blah, blah. When they move to a penthouse, if they are hit with big money and they move suddenly in a pump, they don't see each other. Is it better? Yeah, it's nice in some ways, you know, but, but in a lot of ways it isn't. So that is what, what happened also to West Ham. Long term, definitely good, but short term, they're gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna be hard for them to, to... Win back the fans? Not to win back the fans, but, but the thing is, I, I watched when it happened to Schalke. I watched it when it happened to Schalke. Schalke used to have old big stadium and then and now since the World Cup in Germany they build a new one it's looked like a you know it's like a almost artificial one it's too good like, like from the PlayStation and what they said the structure of the fence changed it's not the the fence are not the same anymore think about like, like this before you have pubs pubs in England and now you have bars those those people who go to the pubs, they drink beer and they're all together and they uh, push each other a little bit, but they like it, you know, they eat chips and all that. They don't, they, they don't like these modern bars. They don't feel comfortable in it. So it's, it's becoming to be with, with the fans. You know, the fans, old-fashioned fans who are there at Upton Park, Chicken Run and all that. And you can, you can read it also. They are adjusting to it, but they are, are they happy? No. Are they moaning? Yes, yeah, they are moaning. They moan because they don't feel comfortable there. So I think the structure of the fence will change. I, I am saying it's going to be worse or better, but it's going to be different. And it's going to be different fence. Slavin, for you, being the manager at the time when the move, the big move happened, purely from a managerial standpoint, did it become harder for you to manage the team once it moved to the new stadium? Yes, it did. I told you that. I told you. Uh, told you that uh, no away team as a team or as an individual nobody liked I remember big players like like Wayne Rooney they were like oh my god we are playing next Saturday we have to go to Upton Park brilliant player great character everything not afraid of anything but a hey, very hostile atmosphere very hostile when now it's Olympic Stadium, everybody goes, oh, we can play here, you know, it's, it looks big, it looks huge, the crowd is, I mean, nobody will touch you at Upton Park, I'm not talking about spitting or touching, it's not, but you feel, as a West Ham player, you feel as a, you are playing really proper at home, and it's going to take time for, for, uh, for uh, Olympic Stadium, uh, that's going to, that the player's going to feel to be like completely at home. It will happen, but for that you need good memories, for that you need uh, some great wins that West Ham has already made, but you can't be, you can't be a history of 100 whatever years, you know, so it's going to take time. When you just uh, became a manager of West Ham, when you came back to this club where you played, uh, you made some great victories against Manchester City, Arsenal and Liverpool. We, yeah. So it was away games. Away games. Yeah, away yeah, games. Yeah, it was, it was, what Winning at Anfield, how did it feel? It felt really good, you know. We, we, that was crazy season. Not only with us, it was season that, uh, that Leicester won the league. So it was, you know, special one, let's say. And we were like, we were unbelievable. If you take uh, top six or seven clubs, I call those Manchester United, Spurs, Everton, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. I 
think we only lost one game. That was against Spurs away. All the other games we either won twice, like Liverpool, or we had one win and one draw. It was unbelievable. We, we, we would be the top of the table if we were counting only that. So, yes, you're right. My, my first game was away at Arsenal. 2-0 we beat them after 12 years. I would have. Second away game. In the meantime, we lost home to Bournemouth and to Leicester. Second away game, we go to Anfield. And I remember West Ham didn't win a game for 50 years or whatever. Years, yeah. And before that, so we beat Arsenal, but then we lost home to Bournemouth and we lost home to Leicester. And nobody knew that, that Leicester is going to be a champion. So it's like, not good, you know, like two defeats, 3-0. Three 3-0 nil. Three nil to us after 50 years or whatever. And then the next away game, Man City away. 2-1 we beat them. It's scary. Like that season it was... Every, and then Chelsea we beat at home. And we beat Liverpool home. We beat Manchester United home, drew away. So I told you, only Spurs away we lost. So you're the Dragon Slayer in 2015. <laughs> yes, we, we... Not me. I mean the you team the was team. enjoying, the team was good. It was our last season at Upton Park. And it was a bit special, you know what I mean? And we had some local boys that uh, they made it more personal, like Mark Noble, like uh, Collins, like Reed, like Tompkins, like Andy Carroll, like Cresswell. It was pretty much a mostly British team, you know, and they really felt it, you know, because they feel the bond more than, than, than let's say, Pajeto Lanzini, who, who were brilliant, they're unbelievable, but, but who only came to the club as a professional player so the whole story was was a bit special was, was it a, was it a hard rock football yeah. was it a hard rock football heavy metal no, football no, it was a good football it it was energetic football it was a complete football because we were we were uh, we defended well we had that kind of uh, as i said like english or british like structure like uh, no nonsense you know we are proper stadium was special but we also have some players who can, who can, who could do special things on the ball, like Payet, like Lanzini, and 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 a lot of other guys. So it was a, it was good football. I really enjoyed it. I think we're, we're good with West Ham. Just uh, maybe a few questions about Everton because yeah. you played there as well. <clears throat> you were trying to not you were trying, but Joe Royal was trying to sign you. Yeah, uh, it didn't really materialize, but then you still came over to Everton because of that. Because of Joe Royal, Joe Royal uh, is uh, he made a big impression on me, and basically with Joe Royal I made a deal, and the chairman of course, Mr. Peter Johnson. But uh, it was Joe who wanted to sign me, and, and then Joe resigned. I didn't sign, but I gave my word. And then when the chairman asked me, like nothing changed, you know, we still want you big time. I said okay. Maybe I've done a mistake then. I don't regret it, but, 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 you know, you didn't know who is the manager and all that. And uh, a massive club, very similar to West Ham, for what it means to the community and to the people. If you are considering the old-fashioned Big Five, then Everton is definitely there. And then the town is uh, much smaller than London, but still big enough to have two mega clubs, like Liverpool and Everton. Then you have the debt. That, that rivalry between them, but not in a nasty way. It's not like religion-wise. It's not like they are. They hate each other. They hate each other when they play against each other. It's more mocking each other. But it's, you have from the f same family. You know, one brother is for Everton, the other is for Liverpool. So it's very sporty rivalry. Uh, unbelievable club. Unbelievable stadium. Uh, Maybe now that Upton Park is gone and White Hart Lane is gone, maybe the best atmosphere now is Goodison mm -hmm. and Villa Park. For me, those two are because it's still big enough. You know, it's still still big enough, and you can feel it there. Those two stadiums, definitely for me, especially is the Goodison one. Is uh, Goodison Park is is unbelievable. At you, everything is close. And they are there, and, 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 but then again, it's not small, it's big enough to basically that you can feel that it's very powerful and all that. My time there, 
I really wanted to go there, uh, but unfortunately I broke my hip in the World Cup 98 and I was gutted. I tried to come back. I'd done everything to come back, but unfortunately that was career ending injury. Unbelievable close. I mean, uh, you know, the problem is we are talking, uh, we are talking 1997. In every club it changed, also in Everton changed. They also became, I think, the corporation more like, a, you know, the football clubs now are more like a corporation, like a, like, like Microsoft or whatever, than, than old-fashioned family football clubs, uh, because the money is, is unbelievable. So the pressure is there, the everything is there. And, but uh, I'm talking then, it's the identity, you know, the people, the people, they, 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 they are so close to the club that Everton means everything to them. The people. It's the people club and they have all those, they have a blue Santa Claus, you know, they, they, they hate the red color and all that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable and you have the kids since they are since they were born, you know, is that basically, is that ID? And that makes football in England or Britain so special. It's not necessarily better than it is in uh, other big countries with, uh, with enough money and uh, good infrastructure. It is that identity that, 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 that the kids, that the kids from their early stage have been taught from their parents not only fathers, also mothers, sisters, grandmothers or whatever, that, that the clubs means basically everything to them. And that's, that's special here. I like Loco, you know, my time there wasn't the best, to be fair. I, I stayed only one season. Uh, we didn't have a great season, but I had great memories about about uh, the town, about the country, about uh, and especially about the club. I'm still in a definitely weekly contact with Stiop, who who is my my translator there, and we text each other before every game. Is it local game? And Charluca is still there, of course. Yeah. And a lot of the, not a lot of the players, but some, some of the players that play when I was there. Uh, it's a great club, Loco. Also special fans, they are like youngish fans or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but they've done really well. They are, they are doing really well. I enjoyed my time in Russia. Unfortunately, the results were not that good. And we had some problems. Uh, <laughs> there with with the board and with the people around the club, but uh, so I couldn't fulfill what I wanted to do. But but still very very good memories and a lot of good friends there. Вот такой он славный бородач Славен. Надеюсь, вам понравилось это интервью. Постараюсь еще несколько вот этих вот больших интервью из наших проектов вам тоже предоставить. Подписывайтесь, шерьте, лайкайте. И самое главное, это все, конечно, Мишура, самое главное, ребята, сидите дома и будьте здоровы. До встречи, пока!